It's great to be here today and uh, once again in the beginning I would like to declare my faith by saying my faith is bigger than my fear. Can we please all say it together? My faith is bigger than my fear. Praise God. My today's theme is disciple. The definition of a disciple is a, a personal follower of Christ during his lifetime. <coughs> and if I can ask you, everybody would love to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Disciples were also called apostles and followers. If you ask me then, I can tell you with my own experience that I loved to be called a disciple or a follower, but I was scared inside. And it can be something similar with you. Because once you decided you want to be a disciple, then many things come in front of you and you have known the stories of many disciples. You could say yourself that uh, people will say that you are like Peter, a very hot-tempered, passionate, <coughs> always following Jesus Christ in all the circumstances. Or you will be called like Thomas, who is a doubter. And then you say that it's uh, not very good that I should be called a disciple, even I would like to follow Christ but not let people know about it because they could have their own, own imaginations about me that what kind of disciple I am. But today I would like to encourage you with the story that if you are a disciple or you are thinking to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ fully in your heart you think that I want to do something for Christ then this sermon could help you and I to follow Jesus Christ because we have many examples of different discipleship. From the scripture, today we are residing on an Easter day because it is an Easter day, the same day Jesus Christ in the evening went to see the disciples and the Bible says they gathered together and they locked the doors because of the fear of Jews. But they were worshipping. And the Bible says that Jesus went in through the locked doors. This is the first indication that how we can be after death and after we'll get the new life. Our bodies will be different than now because once Jesus was resurrected the Bible says Jesus showed his hands and his sides to the disciples and they believed and Jesus said peace be with you in Luke chapter 9 verse 23 Jesus is telling something to his disciples he says that whoever wants to follow me must deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. What does it mean? A very simple verse but once again I would like to tell you that Jesus is telling us to be humble. The very first thing he wants us to be humble, to give him control, to give Holy Spirit to control ourselves. No matter what situation occurs, because we see that in the life of Jesus Christ, when the Jews came to arrest him, Peter was very angry, but Jesus said, calm down, calm down, let them do it. So that's kind of humbleness Jesus wants us to have. And the second thing he said that take up your cross daily. In Roman times, the crucifixion, especially the execution on cross was the worst punishment. It means no matter which situation you had to go, 
or you're going through, just calm down, be humble and walk. And afterwards we see Jesus is saying that peace be with you. And in this passage, Jesus Christ is saying peace be with you three times. It is very important what kind of peace Jesus is telling to his disciple and to you and to I. Why we need to be in peace. No matter what is going on around us, we need to be in peace. You can say that my sins are forgiven. So I am in peace. You can say the slavery of the sin is broken. So I am in peace. You can say that my Savior has taken the worries and the cares. So I am in peace. And we can say that my life is settled in eternity. So I am in peace. It is very important. When I was coming towards Jesus Christ with my whole heart to learn about it and I asked that if you want you can use me. I was scared of death that time. Because I did not knew what will be my eternity. So having Jesus Christ, we can show about our eternity. So we should be in peace now because no matter what happened, one day we have to leave this world. Either you like it or you don't like it, that is the truth. But I would like to ask you, are you in peace? This kind of peace Jesus Christ is telling to his scared disciples that time. That no matter what happened be, be with you, just be in peace. Have my peace. I am giving my peace to you. And then the Bible says that Jesus said something very amazing and did something very amazing. He said to his disciples, receive the Holy Spirit. In the scripture, Jesus is saying, when they were scared and in the room, Jesus is saying, receive my Holy Spirit. Let me remind you what happened in Genesis. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The Bible says, God formed the man from the dust of the ground. Man is just formed, is not alive. And then the Bible says, God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a human being. So now we are living. But because of the sin, we cannot communicate or reconcile with God. But with, through Jesus Christ, when he says, receive the Holy Spirit, we have new life. We are born again. We are not old. We are new now. So that's what Jesus is saying. One birth has come in the time of Adam when God gave the breath of life and the internal life has come from Jesus Christ. This is the difference between the believers and non-believers. Everybody is living but not maybe everybody is going to heaven. Not everybody will have an internal life. Whoever believe on Jesus Christ will have an internal life. And then an interesting story. Like I said that some of you or I might not be want to say that I am following Jesus Christ as a disciple. I can say I am a normal Christian but inside me I have a passion. I love God. I want to tell people but maybe I am scared or I have some foundations. What says in the Bible in John 19.38 a story about Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible says that Joseph of Arimathea went to Pilate and he asked for the body of Jesus Christ. And once he got the body, Bible says that now Joseph was a disciple but Secretly, 
and then he took the body from the cross and he laid in the tomb now we can see that we can be a disciple secretly what a beautiful thing we can learn from the bible i'm not encouraging you to be a disciple secretly but insidely if you think that it's not a right time to announce that i am a disciple a follower of jesus christ a student of theology that you can be like joseph of arimathea and then whenever i preach i try to go with men and women you may all know that there are many women in the bible who were disciples just to encourage the ladies the congregation here a very famous verse in acts 936 the bible says in joppa there was a disciple whose name was tabitha and in greek her name was dorcas she was always doing good and helping poor so she was called disciple so both genders can be disciples and it is proved from the bible and when she died apostle paul was been called and he was told about that thing but the bible says that she was always helping poor and doing good being a disciple being a follower we need to do these kind of things we can say that we all do help people encourage them but from the bible we learn that doing good and helping poor is a quality of a discipleship today if you see anybody in any kind of need it's our responsibility as a follower of jesus christ to reach that person that is why i see that these christian countries in western we can see that there are many problems and afflictions going on and we see that why these people are helping the people who do not support or respect even christianity but many times they reach out and they welcome people they welcome refugees they give them homes place to stay because they have learned from the bible that we need to reach and help them no matter what happens and then there is a story of a broken family it's not a broken in a way it's a broken that they came from different religions many times we see our friends and in families and other people they gather from different religions a story of timothy he was called a disciple as well Apostle Paul went to Timothy's house and in Acts 16:1 the Bible says that Paul went to Derbe at one place like in Slav and then he went to Lystra like Iver he and Bible says there was a disciple named Timothy whose mother was Jewish and a believer but whose father was a Greek this encourages us a lot let me tell you that timothy was the first second generation christian he was very young like our grandchildren he was very young and when the holy spirit came to him and he made his mind to follow jesus christ he wanted to learn from paul he told his parents he said to his dad who was a greek who wasn't a christian or a believer or anything like that he said that i want to to be a follower of jesus christ and want to uh, be a student of paul apostle paul 
and his father was very angry with him. I, I watched that movie as well. And he, he said very bad things about uh, Apostle Paul. He said that Paul is a mad man. Why do you want to follow Paul? You must go to a university. He meant to go to higher universities. I'm talking about Timothy. To do his studies because his parents were very well off, very rich. But when he was called as a disciple, he <coughs> left everything. Even he did not listen to his parents, especially his dad, and he went with Paul. I'm not saying that we should not listen our parents, but sometimes and many times, even the Bible says, if you love your father or mother more than me, you are not worthy of me. If you love your daughter and your son more than me, you're not worthy of me. We need to understand these things. There are certain times and there will be certain times when you will be a disciple or a follower, you have to choose the way. Either you need to follow the world's way, either your family is pressurizing you, or you need to follow the God's way. Let me give you a beautiful story or testimony. One of my friends, I went to Birmingham and I met somebody there, and that young guy was in his teens, 19 or 18 years old. I never knew that he is a believer, a strong Christian. And he told me, uh, we asked him many questions and then he came and said that I follow different church, a different denomination than my whole family in the age of 18 and 19. And he, he said that I faced many problems because I'm following a different denomination. It's in Christianity, following Jesus Christ. I'm not here to name about the denominations, but according to his story, he faced many difficulties just to following a different denomination. But that's what discipleships requires. Even you have certain problems when you are doing discipleship you've been told not to do but you still have to do and then we come to know from the Bible that <clears throat> Thomas we always say that he is a doubter but can we say that he he is well, he was very honest can we be honest with God as well if, that if we don't understand anything, then we can ask. Because once God showed him, Jesus Christ showed him, Jesus said, stop doubting and believing. And the next thing Thomas said that, my Lord and my God. So today, being a disciple, if you have some doubts in your life, I don't know what doubts it can be. You think that your life is very much in struggle. How can you be a disciple? You think that I'm not understanding the scripture. How can we be a disciple? Jesus Christ is not talking to me. How can I be a disciple? Why is he not talking to me as a teacher? Any doubt or anything like that. Then go and talk to Jesus Christ. Go in prayer. Go and read the word of God. Your doubts will be gone and you will come to know that Jesus is saying to you even through the Holy Spirit or the Word of God that stop doubting and believe and then you will be able to say my Lord and my God my Lord means my master and then he said my God the biggest thing we can say about Jesus Christ and it was very difficult that time when the whole incident happened and then we say Jesus said that you believe because you have seen me and now this word is for you and I Jesus is saying amazing thing to Thomas about us and we were not born at that time he said that blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. 
And today you and I are the one who believe upon Jesus Christ. Why? Because of the word of God, because of the testimonies. I have many brothers and sisters sitting here. If they come and tell me something, then I believe that this thing happened. That is the something similar happening in Bible. Many words have written about Jesus Christ and we believe and we are blessed. So today, once again, I would like to encourage you, if you are a disciple, a follower, a student of theology, of Jesus Christ, then keep doing it. If you think that you cannot be an open disciple of any reason, because of any reason, do a discipleship in secret as Joseph. If you are too young or you have any problem in your homes, still have courage to follow Jesus Christ and He will keep blessing you. Yeah. You will be able to say, My Lord and my God, I surrender myself to you. Use me for your mighty name. May God bless you all and keep using you for His glory. Amen.